we are back with another series let's revise pyqs this will benefit you in your upcoming exam let's look at the first question from this video question 1 the patient has a history of fever and cough for the last 3 to 5 days the examination findings show crepitations and the provided image is a chest x ray based on these details what is the likely diagnosis for this patient your options are and the correct answer is right middle lobe consolidation Here's the explanation. So extra parenchymal pathologies, air bronchogram absent, parenchymal pathologies with white alveoli patent bronchi, they would give the air bronchogram present. So where all can we see the air bronchogram? When the lung is becoming white, that is like consolidation. Consolidation, that means it could be because of pneumonia. It could be pulmonary hemorrhage. It could be pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, right? uh it could be pulmonary the fluid that is pulmonary edema it could be high line membrane disease the respiratory uh, distress in a newborn uh, that is high line membrane disease we see bilateral white out lungs right so that can give the air bronchogram sign so basically it would be seen in parenchymal pathologies and not extra parenchymal pathologies like pleural effusion and mediastinal mass So look at this how will you identify the air bronchogram so what is happening here this is the white lung abnormal through that you can see this black bronchi going so this is the air bronchogram sign look again here look at this pathology the white pathology through that you see those black black lines so that is the air bronchogram sign which tells you that this is a parenchymal pathology question 2 identify the image modality given below Your options are And the correct answer is PET CT. Here's the explanation. We can actually combine PET with CT. We can do a hybrid imaging which is called as PET CT. So remember PET CT is an example of hybrid or fusion imaging. It's an example of hybrid or fusion imaging where PET is the functional component. It's a functional scan. nuclear medicine ct is a anatomical scan so we combine the function with the anatomy the advantage is ct gives a very very good anatomical resolution the nuclear scans do not give a good anatomical resolution so we can actually pinpoint the areas of the fdg avid areas are at what level in the spine you know where are we seeing exactly the increased uptake so remember pet ct is an example of hybrid or fusion imaging out of that pet is functional imaging CT is anatomical imaging. Question 3. What is the most probable diagnosis for a 51 year old man who presents with abdominal pain and blood in his stools based on the findings from his barium study of the intestines? Your options are And the correct answer is intussusception. Here's the explanation. Now what is intussusception? Intussusception is one bowel going inside another bowel that is telescoping of the bowel is what we see. So it is telescoping of the bowel, one bowel going inside other. Intussusception is common in a child weaning age group where there is Peyer's patches, the lymphoid hyperplasia, which acts as a lead point for the intussusception. Right. So what do we see here is uh, this one bowel is going inside the other bowel. The outer one is called as intussuscipiens. Even that sounds confusing, which is intussusceptum and intussuscipiens. So remember that the outer one is the recipient. So that is intussuscipiens. The inner one is the intussusceptum. The one which is going inside is the intussusceptum. Now, what is the investigation of choice for intussusception, especially in a child? it is ultrasound right no radiation it helps you identify the bowel within bowel appearance that is the target sign or the donut sign is what we would see on ultrasound in adults visualizing that might be difficult so ct scan can be used in adults barium enema used to be the gold standard previously and intussusception is a condition where barium enema actually can be both diagnostic and therapeutic so in which condition barium enema is both diagnostic and therapeutic it is intussusception so what are the signs that we see in barium enema the sign that we see in barium enema the barium barium going up when the barium goes up reaches the point of intussusception the barium goes around the intussusceptum like a claw 
right so the barium spreads out like a claw so this is called as claw sign okay we get the claw sign so we get the claw sign in intersusception on barium enema other sign that has also been asked is the coiled spring sign what is the coil spring sign intersusceptum intersuscipiens there's some space if there's some space the barium will go outlining the intersusceptum so that gives the that gives the coiled spring sign you will see the barium like a coiled spring appearance okay what are we seeing here on ultrasound it is the bowel within the bowel appearance that is the target or the donut sign in the longitudinal view you would see this pseudo kidney sign what is the pseudo kidney sign so this is like the kidney appearance with the hilum here right so this is actually the bowel going inside another bowel so the kidney with the hilum here that's the intersusceptum that gives the pseudo kidney sign the ct scan is also showing this bowel within bowel the target or the donut sign the clinical feature in intersusception is the patient a child com coming with red current jelly stools okay red current jelly stools red is the blood current jelly is the mucus so blood and mucus in stools what is the immediate management the treatment that we do it is pneumatic reduction air reduction or it could be hydrostatic reduction under ultrasound guidance we can put the saline and we can see for the intersusceptum coming out right so it is pneumatic or air reduction or hydrostatic reduction question 4 a patient arrives with abdominal pain and swelling an x-ray was performed revealing enlarged sections of the intestines as depicted in the image provided determine the specific portion implicated in this condition your options are and the correct answer is jejunum here's the explanation in the bmft these lobes that you see which have this feathery feathery appearance in the left quadrant of the abdomen those are the jejunal lobes okay those are the jejunal lobes so remember that jejunum has feathery appearance because of the volvulae coniventis and these lobes that you see which don't have the volvulae coniventis in the pelvis these are the ileal lobes okay these are the ileal lobes now what is abnormal here uh, in this barium meal follow through is you can see the feathery appearance now on the right side that means the jejunum is on the right side the dj flexure has not gone to the left so when you have jejunal loops on the right side think of mal rotation right the cecum is in the normal position on the right side so jejunum on the right cecum is also on the right think of mal rotation remember it predisposes to developing volvulus okay developing midgut volvulus question 5 in the ct image determine which muscle is impacted in a 15 year old patient who has a past medical history of spinal tuberculosis the patient was admitted to the hospital due to a low grade fever a dull backache and continuous flexion of the hip joint the hip joint motion is both restricted and painful your options are and the correct answer is 2 here's the explanation what muscle inserts on the lesser trochanter it is the iliopsoas muscle okay iliopsoas inserts on the lesser trochanter question 6 a woman with endometrial carcinoma is undergoing radiotherapy which of the following is true your options are and the correct answer is intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source here's the explanation what are we seeing here uh, this is an important question this image is showing brag peak what shows a brag peak remember br is seen with pr that means it is seen with a proton beam now the advantage with the proton beam is this brag peak so what happens with the proton beam is as we give proton beam right as it is entering the body the velocity is high the dose given to the body is less because with proton beam the higher the velocity the lesser is the dose given to the body as it goes deep the velocity decreases and then you see a sudden peak in the dose that is given so basically the superficial structures are protected from the damage when we use proton beam so superficially like at the superficial depth there is not much of the radiation given 
at a deeper tissue there comes a, a peak and then the it general it then goes down right so at this localized point is where we see the peak so this is the advantage this is called as bragg peak the advantage is with the proton beam you can give targeted pencil beam like radiotherapy right affecting only the tumor the surrounding normal tissues are protected so that's why if you have a question that a child with brain tumor you want to give radiotherapy what radiation will you prefer proton why because you don't want in the growing brain the rest of the neurons to be affected right and look at this graph as well comparison of x ray and the proton x rays you can see that they give maximum radiation dose at the entry point itself and that is why with radiotherapy what do we see is the most common side effect that we see with uh, radiotherapy is skin erythema because it affects the superficial tissues question 7 how is personal radiation monitoring conducted your options are and the correct answer is tld badge here's the explanation now in the people working in any department which has radiation how do we measure that how much radiation that person is receiving because it's very important to monitor the radiation dose received if i'm working in a radiology department does not mean that i can get radiation as much as so to monitor that the, we use this this is the one commonly used which is called as tld batch that is tld stands for thermo luminescent dosimeter okay tld stands for thermo luminescent dosimeter so dosimeter means measures the dose of what the radiation received thermo luminescent means so in this tld batch we have a disc a uh, filter which is made of this substance commonly which is called as calcium sulfate dysprosium or it can also be made up of lithium fluoride why these substances because what do these substances do is when they receive the radiation they uh, store that radiation as a latent radiation and when we heat these disc and that is when they emit the light that is thermo luminescent heat they can they emit the light and this amount of light which is emitted depends on how much radiation they had received and that is how they help us measure the radiation dose right so the next question is how frequently do you need to monitor this tld vajme the radiation received in india this is done every 3 months okay this is actually done every 3 months so what do we have here is look at this image itself okay look at this image it's written it is april to june so april may june so 3 months ke baad then the next cycle starts right it has a name written it has the unique number for every radiation worker that is there and this is tld batch question 8 What could be the probable reason for hypertension in this patient, a 30-year-old female who also complained of chest pain and leg cramps, based on the chest radiograph findings shown in the attached image? Your options are, and the correct answer is coarctation of aorta. Here's the explanation. Now, coarctation of aorta. What is coarctation? Coarctation is the focal congenital narrowing in the aorta. Right. so what do we see is if this is the normal aorta we have the focal narrowing in the aorta most commonly this is the post ductal coarctation which is more common the ductal is the ductus arteriosus so it is beyond the ductus arteriosus that we see this narrowing right so what does it give is the appearance of the aorta that gives the figure of three sign on the chest radiograph right so the figure of three sign is the narrowing with the pre stenotic and the post stenotic dilatation so that gives the figure of three sign on the chest x ray on the barium swallow we see the reverse figure of three sign it's a reverse three sign so figure of three on chest x ray reverse three on the barium swallow so look at this one what are we seeing here this is the figure of three sign the coarctation here the figure of 3 sign and this is the reverse figure of 3 sign on barium swallow now what are the clinical features that we see in coarctation of aorta coarctation it is we said that most commonly it is the post ductal one so that means 
the upper limb vessels like it's after the origin of the left subclavian artery from the arch so the upper limb blood supply is normal it is the narrowing ke baad the blood supply is comparatively decreased so the lower limb blood flow is less than the upper limb blood flow so the lower limb blood pressure is less than the upper limb blood pressure because the lower limb blood the blood flow is less the patient can present with intermittent claudication in the lower limbs right and it can lead to hypertension as well okay it can lead to hypertension so these are the findings in coarctation and another important point is we have radio femoral delay right that means the femoral pulse is slow and delayed as compared to the radial pulse because the blood supply is less and also remember the association of coarctation of aorta with turner's syndrome okay it is associated with turner's syndrome so we have figure of three sign we have the reverse figure of three sign and another important sign that we see in coarctation is the inferior rib notching okay the inferior rib shows the notching why does the inferior rib show the notching is because of the collaterals these tortuous vessels that you see they represent the collaterals the prominent intercostal arteries because coarctation leads to decreased blood supply so the body wants to compensate to increase the blood supply to the lower limbs so what happens is there is this bypass route which is formed the intercostal arteries they participate in forming this bypass route so they become prominent where are these intercostal arteries present these intercostal arteries they are present along the lower border the inferior border of the rib right we have the neurovascular bundle along the inferior border that is why when we do pleural tap we say that do along the superior border so that inferiorly you don't damage the neurovascular bundle so these prominent intercostal vessels they pulsate right they pulsate and you have the rib here so pulsation pulsation that leads to the notching of the inferior border of the rib so remember that we have inferior rib notching okay we have the <clears throat> inferior rib notching in coarctation of aorta that is called as riesler's sign okay that is called as riesler's sign question 9 what is the cause of the appearance observed in ivp your options are and the correct answer is ureterocasil here's the explanation cobra head or the adder head appearance okay the cobra head or the adder head appearance which is seen with ureterocele remember it's ureterocele it is not urethrocele or uterocele so what do we see here in ureterocele is the ureter at the point of insertion into the bladder is dilated like the dilated head of the cobra so this is like the ureter coming and the dilated ureter that gives a cobra head appearance look at this one the ureter coming and dilated ureter coming and dilated this is bilateral ureterocele look at this one this is the ureterocele and this is the bladder right so that's a cobra head or the adder head appearance question 10 what is the probable diagnosis for a cystic lesion with calcification observed in the supracellular region during an mri your options are and the correct answer is craniopharyngioma here's the explanation what are we seeing here a lesion in the midline with calcification on mri you see the cyst as well in a child so remember the three c's a child with a midline lesion that is central with calcification with cyst remember it is another c the diagnosis is craniopharyngioma it's a craniopharyngioma don't forget to like and subscribe if you found the video interesting see you in the next one